Hey guys, it's Alexandra from ilovenots.com. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make some really quick and easy coasters worked in double crochet corner to corner boxes. You're going to need some worsted weight yarn, that's a number 4 weight yarn, as well as an H8 5mm crochet hook. This is my favorite crochet hook to use. I've custom ordered it from Sienna's Boutique on Etsy. I will link it in the description box below if you're interested. I do recommend cotton yarn for coasters. It is more absorbent and durable, but a hot cup of coffee is not hot enough to melt synthetic fibers. So if you want to use a yarn like Red Heart Super Saver, then you absolutely can. Just make sure you're not putting anything that is fresh out of the oven on top of it. Otherwise, you risk melting the fibers and burning yourself. But I have several coasters that I've made myself in Red Heart Super Saver and they do a great job. Gauge is not essential for this project, so you can easily use any yarn out of your stash. If you do decide to go with an acrylic yarn, you may want to go up a hook size just because the cotton yarn is a little bit more relaxed so the stitches come out larger. Completely up to you. With the nature of this stitch pattern, we are building from one square in the bottom right corner all the way up until we reach the width that we want. Then we're going to decrease back down until we get to one box on the other side. You can pull any yarn out of your stash. If you want to try a lightweight yarn or a chunky weight yarn, you can do that too. You'll just want to make sure you have a soft tape measure on hand so that you can measure as you go and stop when you get close to the size that you're looking for. You're going to find the written pattern for this in the description box below. Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start with a slip knot. So I've pulled the yarn over my fingers here. I'm going to wrap it around my index finger two times. Hold the tension with my thumb and my middle finger. Pull the loop on the left up over the other one but not off my finger. Then I'll pull the one on the left up and over the other one and off my finger. Take my crochet hook, insert it into the loop on my finger and pull it off. I'll hold the working yarn in my right hand, pull the short tail end with my left, and it will tighten this up to normal tension. We're going to start with a chain 6. To chain, we yarn over and pull it through the loop on our hook. Yarn over, pull it through the loop on our hook. Yarn over, pull through. This gives us these V-shapes here. Each one of those is a chain. One, two, three chains. I'm going to continue so that I have six chains. We don't count the loop that's on our hook. We're going to double crochet into the fourth chain. One, two, three, four. Yarn over. Insert your hook right into the center of that chain. Yarn over and pull through. We have three loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops. We're going to continue double crocheting into each of those last two chains. So yarn over, insert our hook into the center of the next chain. Yarn over and pull through. Three loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over. Insert your hook into the center of the last chain, yarn over and pull through, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. And this creates our first box and row one. Each box is going to be comprised of four stitches. So we have the three double crochets that we just finished working. And then the skipped chains here on the end are going to count as our fourth double crochet. For row two, we're going to start with a chain six. There's going to be two different ways that you're going to start your rows. When we want to add a box, because we are increasing, we're going to start with a chain six. Once we've reached the size that we're looking for and we're no longer going to be adding boxes, then we're going to be slip stitching over. So for this first part, until we get to the size that we're looking for, we're going to be increasing. So we're going to start them all with a chain six. And 
and we'll work down this chain the same way that we did in that first box every time we start with a chain six. We don't count the loop on our hook. We're going to double crochet into that fourth stitch. One, two, three, four. And then double crochet into each of those next two chains as well. And that gives you four stitches the three double crochets plus the skipped chains. And now we have an alligator mouth shape. We're going to take that bottom square, flip it so it's mirrored, and we're going to slip stitch join to the top chain. It's going to be the stitch that is the most natural for you to lay these two squares together, and it's that stitch right there next to it. You can also count from the bottom one, two, three, four stitches. That's where you're going to slip stitch join. We'll insert our hook into the center of that chain, yarn over, pull through that stitch, and through the loop that's on your hook. That's going to be a slip stitch. We're going to do that to secure all our boxes together. For all the boxes in the middle, we're going to start them with a chain two. And this chain two is going to count as our first double crochet of the box. Looking at this box here to the left, you can see that the stitches look horizontal. We're going to be working our double crochets into the space that is right here in the middle in between the chain on the top and the stitch underneath that. Yarn over, insert your hook right into that center space in between the stitches picking up that top stitch on your hook and complete your double crochet. Now you can see the space really well. We're going to work one more double crochet into that space, inserting our hook right into the center of it. When I work on the edge, I like to work into the foundation chain. It helps me get a straighter edge. So when we're working in the middle or on the last box, we're going to start with a chain two. In the middle, you work all three of your double crochets in that space. On the edge, I like to do just two in there, and then the last one in that foundation chain on the left side. So I'm gonna yarn over, insert my hook into that next stitch on the left side, the foundation chain right in the center. And this is the chain that is connected to that double crochet that is just below where you just worked your two double crochets. It's that third double crochet there. And now row two is finished. And we have two boxes. For row three, we're going to start with a chain six. We're going to double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook, not counting this loop. One, two, three, four. And then double crochet into each of the next two chains. And there's our first box from this third row. We have the alligator mouth shape here. So we're going to take that bottom fabric flip it up so it's mirrored and we want to slip stitch join to that top chain you can either count over one two three four stitches or lay your boxes flat together and it's the stitch that is the most natural one for you to work into next insert your hook into that stitch yarn over pull through that stitch and the loop that's on your hook to complete a slip stitch and now the boxes are secured together. Now we're going to finish our next two boxes starting with a chain two. And this chain two counts as our first double crochet. Here in the middle section we're going to work all three of our stitches into this space and for the last box we'll work that last one on the edge. I like to fold down the fabric on the left side so that it doesn't get caught in my crochet hook as I work. Looking at this next box we can see the stitch on the top, 
and then the stitch underneath it we're going to be working into that space in between both of those double crochets. So we'll yarn over, insert our hook right into the center of the space in between the stitches. We have that stitch on our hook and we're going to complete the double crochet. We'll work two more stitches into that space. This will give us four stitches in total and that will complete our second box here. Flip up my fabric on the left side, count over one, two, three, four, or lay your boxes together and slip stitch join to that top stitch. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull through that stitch and the loop that's on your hook, and now these boxes are secured together. We have one more box left to work, chain two, two double crochets into the space in between those last two stitches, and one double crochet on the foundation chain on the left side. And again, working on that foundation chain is just going to help me keep a straight edge. And now row three is complete and we have three boxes. As you can see, with each additional row that we're working, we are increasing our box count. So we started with one and now we have three. We're going to work one more row together. As long as we're increasing, we're starting with a chain six. Then we're going to work down the chain, working a double crochet into the fourth, fifth, and sixth chains. Now we flip that bottom fabric so it's mirrored, slip stitch join to the top stitch. Fold down the fabric on the left so it doesn't get caught in your crochet hook as you work. And for all the boxes that are not the first one where we increased, we're working a chain two to begin. Three double crochets into that space in between those last two stitches. Bring that fabric back up, slip stitch join to the top of the next box, fold down that fabric on the left, chain two, and work three double crochets into that space in between those last two stitches. Unfold my fabric, slip stitch join to the top stitch. chain two, two double crochets into that space in between those last two stitches, one double crochet into the foundation chain on the left side. And there's row four complete with four boxes. And now you'll just continue increasing in this manner until you reach the size that you're looking for. That can be either width-wise or height-wise, and then we start decreasing. To count these boxes, as long as you're still increasing, you can count the diagonal that you have here. One, two, three, four boxes. That's four rows. Or you can count from that very first box up. One, two, three, and four. That's going to change once we start decreasing, but for now you can count this way. And you don't even need to count if you don't want to. You can lay it down, take a soft tape measure, measure from the edge of the left side over to the edge of the right side. I always like to start at the number one on my ruler for a more accurate measurement. And when you get to the size that you're looking for, then you can stop increasing. For a coaster, we want to have five boxes in total before we start decreasing. So we've just completed row four. We'll start row five with the chain six, 
work down that chain and all the way across and that's going to give us five boxes. Then we'll start decreasing back down to one. Now that we have reached the size that we're looking for, we are no longer going to be starting either side with a chain six. We are going to start both sides with a chain one and turn. We're going to slip stitch into the second double crochet, insert your hook into that stitch, yarn over, pull through that stitch and through the loop on your hook, slip stitch into the third stitch, and slip stitch into the fourth stitch. Then we'll chain two, and now we're in a position to work that first box into that space right in between those last two stitches. Slip stitch join as normal, and continue working all the way up to the last box. Once we get to that very last box and we slip stitch, we are not going to chain two and work another box on top, because this is as tall as we want it to be, with each row that you work, you're going to see that you're decreasing by one box, and we'll keep decreasing until we get down to one box in the corner. So let me work across here. I'll show you again how to start the row, and then I'll leave you to it. Here's my last box of the row. I'm going to slip stitch here. Not chain two. My row is now complete. And to start the next row, chain one, turn, slip stitch into the second double crochet, into the third double crochet, and into the fourth double crochet. Chain two, and now I'm ready to begin with my three double crochets into that space in between those last two boxes. And here you can see the edge growing. And you'll work across there. Once you slip stitch your very last box there, you won't work anything on top of that. You'll just chain one, turn, and work back the other way. I'm gonna go ahead and work off camera until I get down to my last box. And then I'll be back with you so that we could add our border. There's my last box. I have just one there. I finished all the rest of them. And I'm gonna go ahead and slip stitch join. You don't have to put a border on if you're happy with the shaping and the way it looks, the width and the length, all that good stuff. You can just fasten off now, but I am going to add a border of just simple chains and single crochet just to give a little finished edge there. I'm going to start with a chain one and I'm going to turn. There is no right side and no wrong side because we've just worked in the same color throughout the whole thing and we've turned with each row. So you don't have to turn but I think it's easier to work into this stitch by turning. This is gonna be a really easy, simple border all the way around. In the spaces here in between boxes, that's where we're going to work our single crochet. So I'm gonna insert my hook right into the center of that space, yarn over and pull through. I have two loops on my hook, yarn over and pull through both loops. That's gonna complete a single crochet. Now we're gonna single crochet in between this space in between all the boxes. Over top of the boxes to get there, we're going to chain two. And in every corner stitch, I'm going to work a single crochet, insert my hook, yarn over and pull through two loops on my hook, yarn over and pull through both loops, then I'll chain two and single crochet back into that same exact stitch. Insert my hook, yarn over and pull through two loops on my hook, yarn over and pull through both loops. And you could do a variety of ways. You could do three single crochets in there. You could do single crochet, half double crochet, single crochet. You could do single crochet, chain one, single crochet. The more chains you do, the more square of a corner you're going to have. Or if you did a half double crochet in there, it would give you a more square corner. With the chain one or three single crochets, you'll have more of a rounded corner. So you can experiment with different stitches there and see what you like for your corner. Over top of the box, I'll do a chain two, and that gets me to the next space that's in between those two boxes. I'll insert my hook right into the center of the space, yarn over and pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through both loops. Chain two, single crochet into the space in between the next two boxes chain two, 
single crochet in the space in between the next two boxes. And this is going to be my pattern throughout the whole border. I'm just going to work all the way around with a chain two above the box and then a single crochet in the space in between the boxes. And when I get to the corner, I'll work one more chain two over this last box. In the very most corner stitch of the box, I'm going to work a single crochet, chain two, single crochet. And then I'll chain two over the other side of the box and then begin again with the single crochets in between the boxes. And if you've modified your first corner, just make all your other corners with the same stitch pattern so it matches. I'll go ahead and work all the way around and then we'll join together. Here's my last single crochet. My next one is right here, the one I started the round in. So I just have one more chain space to work here. And then I'm going to insert my hook into that very first single crochet, picking up both loops of the V shape yarn over, pull through that stitch, and through the loop that's on my hook. If you wanted to add an additional round, you could chain one, work a single crochet into this very first single crochet, work two single crochets into each chain two space, single crochet into the first single crochet of the corner, single crochet, chain two, single crochet into that chain space, single crochet into the next single crochet of the corner and then just continue in the same manner all the way around two single crochets in each chain two space and one single crochet into each single crochet and if you changed the way that you increased in your corners you can repeat that in this next round too just make sure you do it on all four sides I'm not going to add an additional round I just wanted one little round to finish it up so I'm ready to fasten off now. I want to make sure I leave a tail in long enough I can comfortably weave in. Pull up on this loop to break it. And then I like to bring it to the wrong side so I'll insert my hook into the same stitch that I slip stitched to from the wrong side or the back. Yarn over with the tail end and just pull it through to the back. Now I'll grab my tapestry needle and I'll meet you back here so we can get our ends woven in. Because this has worked in one solid color and we've turned each row, it doesn't matter which side is the right side or which side is the wrong side. But I like to go with the direction that my border is worked in here. So where I slip stitch joined, that side that I was working from is going to be my right side of the fabric. Where the stitches look a little bit more defined and pretty in the border. And the other side of the fabric is going to be my wrong side or the back side. And I'm just going to have all my ends woven in on the back side. All of them are going to be worked exactly the same. It doesn't matter if it's where you had to add a new ball of yarn or if you're working from either of the two ends. I'm going to be working mine each with three passes. That's my magic number. If you feel comfortable after working two passes, then you can go ahead and fasten off. If you feel like you need a little more security, you can work four. Whatever you feel the most secure with your ends. I also don't pick up the whole entire stitch on my needle. When I enter and exit, I always insert my needle into the middle of it to break it in half. And that's going to help capture my yarn better. And I do like to work into one stitch itself here, but you can also work over and then into the bulkiness of the cluster here. Just make sure that you definitely manipulate your fabric as you go so that it doesn't bunch up too much. I'm going to insert my needle into this nearby stitch, breaking it in half. I'm going to run it up vertically here. And I'm going to break the last stitch in half when I exit. Hold the fabric in between my middle finger and my thumb to help so it doesn't bunch up quite as much. Give it a tug. Use my fingers to manipulate the fabric if I need to, if it has bunched up. I want it to lay naturally here. And then I'll go ahead and turn. Insert my needle into a nearby stitch, breaking it in half. 
run it back up through several of the stitches I just finished working into and then break my last stitch in half when I exit as well. Hold the fabric in between here as I pull through, give it a tug, use my fingers to manipulate the fabric if I need to. And I like to do three passes so I'll rotate once more so I can work back in the same direction inserting into a nearby stitch, breaking it in half, up through several of those same stitches and break my last stitch in half when I exit. That's how I do all of my passes. And now I'm happy with that, so I'm going to go ahead and fasten off. And I'll go ahead and continue doing the same thing with all my ends here. I'll just work one vertically up here, and this other one will go horizontally into the bulkiness of that cluster right there. Guys, thanks so much for watching my video. You'll find the written pattern in the description box below. Please smash that like button and hit subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.